weekend's video, I'm going to take you along to a campground that holds a special meaning to me. And maybe we'll get into that a little bit later, but for now, let's just enjoy these views. After winterizing the camper last week, I got some questions. Does that mean we're done camping? Not by a long shot. Winter camping is my favorite time of year to be out there. I think last year we had six months of snow on the ground. So if it's not for winter camping, this channel probably wouldn't exist. It seems like every week I just keep thinking, Minnesota never lets me down. I don't plan these places. Usually Friday, lunch break, that's when I start thinking, what am I gonna do for this week's video? Every week, it seems like we're able to find some place that's almost more beautiful than the next. Oh, this is awesome. I think I've mentioned in some other videos that going camping on the weekends is how I stay grounded. I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos and I was that guy that said, one day when I retire, I'm gonna travel all over in my camper. And truth is, you never know what's gonna happen. Today I'm bringing you out to Rock Lake Campground and this is north of Pillager, Minnesota. And I think it's about 25,000 acres of state land. It's called Pillsbury State Forest and Rock Lake Campground is part of that. This campground's got a pretty cool story. Let me tell you about it. It was 1903 that this was the first place they had a state forest nursery. It's a little chilly out today. Get inside, turn the furnace on. But to get to the real story of when the state park began, we gotta fast forward to the 1950s. That's when the state hired a gentleman by the name of Walter Stark. So his job was to manage the logging out here. But he thought this area should be more used for recreation. And the state said that they just didn't have the money for that. So he took it upon himself to develop this 48 site campground. So he talked with some of the neighbors in here, got some dump trucks and front end loaders and came in here, cleaned out 48 campsites. That's pretty awesome. He knew that if he was gonna get permission, there'd be all kinds of red tape and decided to bypass all of that. Well, the furnace isn't turning on. It's gonna get down in the teens tonight. It's gonna be cold. Well, let's get this slide moved out so I can access the breaker panel. Maybe it's just something simple. So back to the story, Walter figured that it would be easier to ask for forgiveness than permission to put these campsites in. He knew that this forest was better off used as recreation for the people instead of logging for the state. And I think that's a pretty cool story. Well, let's hope we can get some heat in here. Well, this is odd. After looking at stuff, I realized I don't even have any 12 volt power in here, but I put the slide out. When I left the refrigerator is working, now it's not working. I guess I'm gonna have to get in here and see if there's a relay that's bad or what. <laughs> Wish me luck. Uh, that could be a problem. Well, the main battery disconnect switch, it's off. There we go. Must have bumped it while driving down the road. Well, good news, we're gonna have heat, but it's really weird that the slide out worked with the battery switch off. Unless it somehow got bumped in between then, but how weird is that? We are gonna take the airbags, drop down the driver's side, hopefully get this thing leveled out. Well, that did it. Five minutes, get this camp set up. That's why I love truck camping.
a dampness in the air tonight, making it feel colder than it actually is out here. See if this fire will help take the chill out of the air. They're not calling for snow, but it definitely feels like it could start any time. They're talking 50 degrees tomorrow. That's really warm. And uh, I can't remember the last time I haven't been on the ice Thanksgiving Day doing a little ice fishing. But it's all right. I need to get a coat of paint on the snowplow truck, well, at least on the plow. And that's got to happen sooner than later. We'll get snow. It'll come. That's all you can do, though. Take it one day at a time. That's a nice fire. Oh, it feels warm right here. Today is the last day of rifle season here in Minnesota, which means some of those dispersed campsites in the state and national forests are going to open up. We still have muzzleloader to get through yet, and then archery is going to run through December, but the campsites, they'll open up. There's a couple of campers in this campground, well, a couple of hunters anyways. And they've got their deer hanging up in trees, and we'll see if it gets a little loud tonight. I'm surprised that they're not here, but their deer are here. I had a family friend pass away this week. It's actually my former father-in-law, but I've known them my whole life. I had a really good friend all growing up through school, and I married his younger sister. So I've been here at this campground camping uh, with that family since I was 10 years old. I can remember the first time I was out here, their dog ended up peeing all over the pillows, and uh, that was a good memory of this place. But the services were today and we we're talking and with my old friend and um, about his dad and one of the memories we had out on the lake driving across and the boat just revs up and comes to a stop and we're just revving for what in the heck and uh, we lost the prop on the boat so then we had to oar back into the boat landing but a lot of good memories on this lake and that's why I chose to come out here tonight share this spot with you guys and I'm going to make supper kind of in his memory tonight because one of the things that he loved was sitting around the campfire making supper and having a few drinks. So tonight's fire's for him.
when I pulled up to the campground originally, I was going to pick one of the spots on the lake, but that wind is coming across that water, is cutting right through the clothing. So we moved back here into this loop. I got the truck parked to block the wind, and I think this is going to give us enough cover to make some supper over the campfire tonight. I got the camp stove. We're going to try making lasagna, something that I haven't ever made on the campfire. So fingers crossed, it turns out good. Let me show you how we're going to put this together. All right, check it out. We got the camp stove and we've got lasagna ingredients. First thing we gotta do though, is get this pork on the fire. Let's do that first. We're gonna go a pound and a half of ground pork. And the rest of the ingredients, this is really simple. 15 ounces of ricotta cheese. We're gonna mix one egg with the ricotta cheese, 25 ounces of pasta sauce, a quarter cup of fresh parsley, oven ready lasagna noodles, 25 ounces. And it's important that you get the oven ready stuff. Some Italian seasoning, and also one and a half cups of cheese. Pretty simple recipe, I hope I don't burn it, but I think I better go pay attention to that pork. While the pork's browning, we're gonna mix this ricotta cheese with one egg. And then we're gonna cut up the parsley. And then a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. teaspoon of salt. Now we can mix this up. Let's go see how that pork's coming along. Smells good, that's for sure. Perfect. Let's go bring this inside. The smells and flavor of cooking over a campfire, you just can't beat it. Let's get the pork sausage transferred over into another plate. And now we're gonna start layering the lasagna inside here and it will go back on the fire. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit more oil in the pan. And we're gonna go a half a cup marinara sauce. Now we're gonna put down a layer of the lasagna noodles and you may have to break them a little bit just to make sure they all fit. And then another half a cup of marinara sauce. And then about half this ricotta mixture. As you can tell, I'm not measuring anything out. We'll go about a half a cup of the pork. And we're gonna start all over again with the noodles.
we'll put the cover on and we are good to go. It is getting dark out there and I think a lot of the hunters are starting to roll in. So hopefully it doesn't get too loud. So I'm going to put this right in the bed of coals. I've got hot all the way around there, hot on the bottom. Maybe in another 20 minutes, I'll move some coals up to the top of the lid. We'll check it. The recipe said it'll take like 35 minutes. We'll check it often though. I don't want to burn it. It looked too good. I like to use a paper towel to get most of the food off of the dishes. And then I just hit them with a little bit of water, power wash, all done. It's been on for about 15 minutes and I just flip it every five minutes or so. I keep the heat over there. Um, it's not too hot, that's for sure. It's looking like it's gonna be doing good. I can probably put a little bit more heat around it. on for about 30 minutes. I figured I'd try and get some of this heat up on top. Maybe that'll help brown that cheese up. I had a set of tongs. You think I can find them? Nope. I'll give it like 15 minutes and then I'll pull the lid. We'll see what it looks like. That looks perfect. Stick the prongs in there, see if the noodles are done. Oh, they're nice and soft. I think it's done. Let's bring it inside and just let it sit for a minute. It'd probably be wise to have one of those meat thermometers that I could stick in the middle just to make sure it's done. But I mean, it's just cheese and sauce. Meat's already cooked. There's nothing really to worry about. Well, I think I'm just going to give it a minute to set up and then we'll dig in. Man, that stays hot for a long time, but I think it's time to dig in. Oh, it looks so good. I picked up these containers at Costco. It's such a good deal. You can get a huge package of them and I'm going to be having a lot of leftovers here. Oh, wow. Okay, let's try and take this piece right here. <laughs> yeah, this turned out so awesome. This turned out better looking than I thought it was gonna. Okay, here it is. First bite. The noodles turned out perfect. The ricotta cheese and cheese melted up on top. I mean, this is just perfect. What is that noise? Oh, I've got all of my stuff plugged in for the GoPro and the wireless mics and something's making noise. This recipe was super easy and if you like lasagna, give it a try out at the campsite. It's not much of a mess. It didn't take a lot of bowls to make it or anything. And it is awesome. Sometimes it's nice to come into a campground. It's got a little bit of data. So that way you can turn on the TV and just have some background noise. I think I've talked about this before. I'm the type of person that if it's too quiet, my mind will just start racing. So I always like to have a little bit of noise on in the background. And Saturdays and Sundays, that's when a lot of my favorite YouTubers just drop through new videos. So it works out perfect get some of these leftovers packed away. That's gonna be good for lunch. Then we'll probably go out to the campfire and burn the rest of our wood. Check that out. Two years of finally figuring out how to use this stuff. Do you remember when I cooked garlic bread in there? Yeah, no good. Oh, 
I'm stuffed. I had to pause my show though. It's kind of cool when you see two of your, you know, favorite YouTubers get together. It's like watching shows back on TV when you were a kid. Like if you were to see Arnold jump on Facts of Life, you'd be like, oh, this is awesome. Or when Urkel went on to a full house, it's like meshing of the world. It's pretty cool. It's been surprisingly quiet out here. I thought for sure with the hunters in the campground that I'd hear a little bit of music or something, but they all rolled in a couple hours ago and must have went straight to bed. It's not a peep out here. We're spread apart pretty good. It's not like you can see anybody. There's a faint generator running in the background. That's about it. I ran into a friend from high school today and that was really fun. Someone that I haven't seen in like 30 years. So it's cool to catch up. Oh, we started talking about parents and just, you know, most of us, a lot of us our parents have already passed on and this reminds you of how quick life is. I still feel like a kid. I don't even know what I want to be when I grow up. And if I live another 20 years, I'm already outliving my dad. I don't know if I can say one day when I retire, I'm going to and fill in the blank. Who knows what's gonna to happen tomorrow? I'm really, really happy that I'm able to get out here on the weekends and share this with you guys though. I guess all we can do is just live our best lives, realize that we've all got an expiration date, which is one of the reasons why I love hearing from you guys when you tell me that uh, the video has inspired you to get out camping or you're looking at buying a truck camper because you want to do the trips that you see me do on the weekends. It's just awesome to think that my videos could inspire someone. And I don't even like saying that because I'm my own worst critic. And for me to think that I could actually inspire anybody is just nonsense. But you know, you guys have said that the videos have inspired you. Okay, so I'll take credit for it. I wish that I wasn't so hard on myself all the time. <laughs> uh, start over. I am mentally exhausted. So I think that I'm gonna call it a night. I'll see you guys in the morning. I had a really good sleep last night. I think those hunters must have been as tired as I was because I didn't hear a peep from them last night. However, at about two o'clock, I must have been dreaming of a truck backing up because I remember hearing beep, beep, and then I finally wake up and realize this is my refrigerator is telling me that there's a low flow alarm. So I ran out of propane. And I just decided, shut the fridge off. I'm going back to bed. I woke up this morning at about seven o'clock, 31 degrees inside here. It was chilly. I put the jacket on and shoes, ran outside, cracked open my second tank, and uh, I haven't been back outside since. At least the temperature's about 40 degrees right now. Bought them on my second pot of coffee, and the nice thing about being in an established campground, we've got vault toilets. Holy buckets, that wind is cold. Yeah, I brought the coffee in there, but you bring your phone in there. Don't judge. It's like an old building foundation or something. It's pretty cool. I wonder what it was. Looks like all of the hunters have cleared out this morning. Walking in the woods is just beautiful. It's just a perfect day today. I'm gonna bet that most of these sites, they're gonna be empty for the rest of the season. We'll get some snow soon and we might have to come back up here again. I've been sticking to the woods right near the campground. As I went a little bit further, I found an awesome trail. 
I'd love to go walk it, but I don't have my orange on. And I think today is the last day that you can harvest a deer, so we're not gonna take our chances. Well, check this out. I got back to the camper and I noticed that there's these piles of, I don't know, acorns and pine needles on my steps. And then right over on the picnic table, same thing. Well, I hope that doesn't mean we had a visitor while we were out on the walk. The last thing I need is a mouse or a chipmunk inside the camper. I just have no clue where the time goes. I was thinking about making buttermilk pancakes for lunch, but we're well past lunch already. It's about that time we get heading home. I got work tomorrow. I still gotta go home and wash the clothes and do some housework yet. But like we talked about yesterday, gotta be thankful for the time we do have out here. Oh, there you go. Had another video in the bag. You guys have hung out with me all weekend long. That's about long enough. We'll do this again next Tuesday. Until then, be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.